Dr. Sushil, can you please share your screen? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sushil, I would request you to keep it brief so that we can have more time to discuss with you and the other panelists. Thank yeah, you. sure, definitely. Yeah, can you see the first slide? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, uh, Yossi, for giving me this opportunity. You all want to, me to talk on retina, something which takes more than two years to complete in 10 minutes. But okay, so here we go. It's not moving forward. Yeah. So before you start the fellowship, you should decide why you really want to do a fellowship and talk to somebody. You know, there are a lot of pros and cons of a retina practice. So the pros are you, you have your mind challenged. There's, you can be a savior for the anterior segment uh, complications. You will be recognized in your community. You know, it'll be popular among the local ophthalmologist community. And also, if you are a posterior segment, why not get married to somebody who has anterior segment? But there are a lot of cons also. You see that all cases, like other subjects to retina, all, all cases are different. And there is an effort required to learn and practice. A lot of effort is required actually to gain clinical as well as surgical skills. And there's a steep learning curve. Monetary gains are not so much for the amount of effort you put in. And even if you gain something, the profit margin is quite minimal, not like how you have in cataract surgeries. And it requires a long-term fellowship because we don't believe that you can do a full retina surgery in three months or six months. It's not possible. And obviously, after fellowship also of two years, it requires a guidance. So I have asked this to a lot of our fellows. Why retina? You know, like Why have you chosen retina? So no retina surgeon in my home city. That was one answer. My spouse is practicing anterior segment. Never had the opportunity of learning retina during PG. I want to do a short-term retina because I can manage my own nucleus drops. So I like the surgical aspect. It's very challenging. It's a very fascinating, intriguing subject. In my hospital, the retina department was very chilled out, very cool people. So I want to take up retina. It has more scope. I was inspired by a mentor who was in retina. And some, some even answered that I found other subspecialties uh, more difficult. So my reason was obviously intriguing, yes. But the main reason was without knowing retina, you won't know the cause for uh, decreased vision in a patient. And it's also you'll be confident and do a complete ocular examination when, you, when a patient presents to the OPD. So the first question you ask before you join is, like I said before, time. Are you willing to put in time? So most surgical retina fellowships are two years, but that's actually not enough. And uh, vitro retinal surgery is a steep learning curve, like I said before. Please come please. Please. Hmm. Come Dr. Bhavia, can you please mute yourself? Dr. Bhavia, can you please mute yourself? Yeah. I would request people who are not speaking to actually mute yourself so that the you know the speaker's flow doesn't get disturbed. Over to you, Dr. Bhavia. Sorry for the interruptions. Yeah. So before you join any, you think of taking up retina fellows, fellowship, you do a self-analysis. You know, after I finish my post-graduation in ophthalmology, yes, I surely want to do retina. But am I familiar with good anterior segment examination and surgical techniques? Do I have enough hands-on in managing anterior segment? If I do, yes, you should be, your retina fellowship will be a relative ease. It's not easy, but it will be a relatively easy. If no, then your struggle is increased as the first few months or first even half a year or more than that will go in just managing anterior segment, you know, because you're, you'll be struggled, struggling to do AC paracentesis, holding the globe, difficult in managing the microscope. You know, simple procedures will make it even more difficult. So better to get a hands-on comprehensive training, like at least for six months or one year before you actually think of joining uh, Retina Fellowship. Have a good anterior segment management training. So then you come to choosing an institute. So that has a lot of factors which you decide when you choose an institute. If you go to vrsi.in or even the IOS website, there are a lot of uh, retina fellowships uh, centers which are described there. So it depends on uh, observation. So first of all, you can go there for an observation. You talk to any ex-fellows or seniors from the institute, see how many, how much hands-on you get. You tell them about how much your experience. Your decision can also be based on the city and also on the surgical chances which the institute provides. Also, you have a option between a private going for a corporate institute or versus a tertiary eye care center where the numbers will obviously be more and you can have a structure and go for an institute which has a structured training you know you'll be here and then after a week you'll be posted somewhere else you know something like that a structured training you are going to get your numbers like that and then obviously some, some of them will have a waiting period they last and in that time you can probably you know brush up on your anterior segment more 
and you can also choose institutes with a bond versus you know no bond that's also influencing factor and obviously short term versus long term so short term i really don't believe in you should always retina is always a long term fellowship so you are a new we are fellow in the department so what can you what do you, what you can expect so you can expect to see a lot of patients obviously in the opd and there will be a lot of variation of normals so you have to you will get access to diverse cases different presentations of a disease access to imaging and also uh, you will get classes by and teaching by the seniors now what is expected of you you are supposed to learn perform and show indirect ophthalmoscopy as a beginner charting of retinal detachments obviously ask questions any doubts you have to ask and if you find see something interesting you have to read upon it on the same day so all this goes in to gaining a clinical uh, skill so the depressor and the indirect ophthalmoscopy and your 90d will be part and parcel of your life you will be going through the opd see, seeing the retinal diseases or fundus examination doing indirect learning about ffa interpreting ffa angiograms doing b scans on patients doing as well as interpreting or interpreting octs and also you will be doing uh, uh, indirect lasers as well as lasers on slit lamp assisted laser so all this forms part of your op work up as well as op uh, procedures so charting of rd is very very important when you are an, as a initial uh, fellow you will be taught how to chart the problem nowadays is most of the system has become emr so you really the the practice of charting is actually lost as now most of the things are on the uh, emr but charting if you if you do it, it's really good and then it forms a basis of you know you will be perfect in your anatomy and you'll be perfect in your examination and you'll be confident as a surgeon if you are doing your charting so and also in the op you'll be posted in different subspecialties you know now retina is multiple subspecialties you you can go you can choose you can uh, be posted in uveitis you will have uh, be learning stuff with with a mentor for macular diseases even pediatric retina and intraocular tumors are a different subspecialty now and arvind is offering a one year uh, pediatric retina fellowship separate after you finish your two years of uh, vr fellowship so you will be uh, having you will be screening for rop then also you'll be doing uh, access to rop laser so all this forms part of your basic uh, op uh, training and procedures so it's an ever winding road so once you will be in retina opd uh, you know you'll be starting off and then in one to two after you learn the basics of the opd you know you can manage and see identify some amount of retinal diseases you'll be starting off with your op procedures your b scans your lasers other things and then in 3 months you'll be posted in the ret after 3 months once you have a basic training in the opd you'll be access to the retina uh, operation theater and then you'll be giving injections and after the one or two weeks you know that's already by the time it's already 6 months and you'll be starting your cases uh, silicon oil removal or clearly fixated iol these are the initial cases where you can judge the fellows on how they are doing their anterior segment you know how they doing well with their globe management and then down the line slowly slowly 6 to 8 months almost towards the end like you know 3 months before or even 6 months before your fellowship depending on the capability you will be given uh, retinal detachment cases or you know vitreous hemorrhage cases and you will be confident in handling them a uh, single handedly so in the uh, when you are doing your fellowship you have to set some goals it's easy to get lost due because it's opd is quite busy it's easy to get lost so you have to have your own personal expectation as well as you have to manage the institute's expectations too so and you also have to manage different personalities uh, and gain a collective experience not everybody is bad not everybody is good but learn all the good points from everybody that's what uh, you know uh, sets you apart from the others so you have to have a good clinical education and a self uh, directed learning it's like i said go back and read something and then you'll get to uh, manage the next time in a different way so at the end of fellowship you should have a clear plan or an action or an algorithm for managing common uh, retinal diseases so next you coming have to one minute remaining sir yeah coming to maximizing vr surgery so earlier before you should do a simulated training learn your machine your microscope the foot pedal read on retinal uh, read go back and read regarding surgery assist and uh, answer, uh, question the seniors so simulators or not all institutes will be having sit with a mentor and learn and see how they do surgeries in a different way then once you are an intermediate do a step properly then do a case properly and numbers don't matter it all matters how you manage the patient and next day the post operatively the patient should be good you should do a good job on a single patient don't go for numbers watch lot of videos 
okay and then so sit uh, once you're performing surgery a mentor will sit with you and assess how you're doing learn to put ports properly okay and then once you're advanced in your end of fellowship record your videos discuss these videos with your seniors log your cases follow up your patients and also teach others teach more juniors on how you perform so once towards the end of your fellowship you can sit single handedly and manage simple cases so initially you'll be given silicon oil removals like this you should know how to do a proper exam depress the fundus see the periphery see the aura then you will be and if you're not, if you're complacent you will have problems like this retinal touch that too with a light pipe when you go inside then you will be managing oil removals along with sclerally uh, fixated intraocular lenses so all this will decide in the initial phases how you manage well the globe your anti segment management and all those things then you will be moving on to simple rds like this where the pvd is already there and once you are confident in your simple rds more complex cases where the pvd is not there so here's a, a video of a fellow trying to induce a pvd and then you can sit and assist obviously scleral buckles and also you will be given chance to uh, put sutures and putting the bands so go back and read look at a lot of videos we are surgical procedures uh, you know a lot of uh, material is available youtube facebook itube and even on instagram retina tips is there you can go back and look at those uh, videos try to squeeze in some amount of research personally i did only one or two i got only one or two papers out during my fellowship it's, it was mostly after that where i uh, started doing research but if you have time you can that's also a part of a uh, learning so always a multitasking you have to learn how to start to learn multitasking you'll feel that there are not many hours in a day so time management is very important work life balance may be difficult so you have to fully immerse in the field to gain the most especially when you are in uh, retina so after you are finished you know you feel like you have had a well rounded fellowship you can discuss your options with your mentors and colleagues and see you know you can do a self assessment am i good or do i need to continue so you can continue in the same institute or you can join elsewhere but under guidance you feel if you can manage on your own yes go ahead but be wary and also you have an option of further continuing in pediatric retina or in uveitis so to conclude clarity before you enter and during while you are doing you should have a clarity of the clear goal of what you want to do when you are in retina fellowship you should learn and maximize that opportunity enhance your clinical skill that's the most important watch discuss and learn surgery your time is up sir yeah whatever the path enjoy the journey and it should be committed to lifelong learning so thank you and if you are in retina it, it is fun and time flies when you are having fun thank you thank you